Hello and welcome back to my garage. Today, not a battery video, not a brake video, we're going to replace a sensor. Oh boy. The Renault Megane is back. And my brother has an ongoing problem with the particle sensor in the car. First of all, the fault we have. If you start the car, you can see a, in the display on your dashboard and it says something like uh, there is a problem with the uh, injection system or there is something wrong with uh, the environmental blah blah something. I just bought recently a new scan tool. This scan tool can do a little bit more than the stock OBD uh, you have maybe lying around. Uh, also, this one isn't that uh, expensive, I believe uh, somewhere around uh, 100 euros I paid for this. But of course, if you have one of those small OBDs for maybe uh, 10 US dollars, um, you can see the fault in the OBD, but you cannot see what is happening. So if you want to know what's happening, then I advise you to invest in a scanner like this. Um, it isn't fast, but I can read almost everything with it. So I am really happy with this scan tool. I plugged in the scanner and I saw that the sensor was stuck and it, I believe the reading was 1.8 or something like that and it was just flat light. So that's, that is normal. So if I just hammer the, the, uh, the pedal it just stays at 1.8 and the thing I thought was that well the sensor was stuck or maybe the lines were clogged or something like that. We did plug in the scan tool and we did add some additive into the fuel, uh, especially for cleaning the particle filter. We took the car for a drive and we really hammered the car and, and when we did that we saw that and it just rose a little bit. Uh, so that was a good sign. So or we uh, cleaned the sensor out, so that the laziness or maybe whatever that thing is doing. Uh, but it, it rose, it rose, it rose, and um, so we still hammer it, hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. It keeps, it keep climbing, or it it keep hanging even. So I said to my brother. Just take the car uh, and be sure to drive a little bit sporty so we can maybe clean out the whole system. And it did help. It, um, I think he had no problems uh, in two or three weeks. So we hope that it was solved, but of course it came back again. So uh, first thing of course we put in the scanner again and the only thing it displays was zero, absolutely nothing. So my brother said to me, uh, just order one of these sensors because he believes that the sensor is faulty and it can be faulty. So then again, it doesn't have to be the sensor that is the fault here. Those two hoses that are connected to here can uh, just deteriorate and break. But I looked at, the, at them and I could not find any, well, breaks or leaks within those hoses. But then again, it is really a nasty place. You cannot see it, so I had to with some mirrors and lights. And But what I could see, those weren't uh, broken. I didn't get the hoses, it's really stupid of me, I really should have get them, but my part supplier didn't have those, so you probably need to get them from the local Renault dealer. From the factory they came with Bosch, and I did order a Bosch one also. No, this isn't the cheapest sensor out there you have, um, I believe this one was about um, 80... 80 euros, so 19 US dollars, 100 US dollars, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, I could get one for, I think, 30 euros, something like that. 
If you have one of the older cars, you can go with other sensors. Most of the time, they just work fine. I just have bad experience with newer cars. Yeah, this is this is a newer car for me. Uh, with se uh, replacing sensors and then all kinds of funny things happen. So I'm not really a big fan of uh, buying other brands, not, not even the cheap brands, but other brands. So even if I uh, from from Facet or uh, Facet is just a, a good brand, but I always go for the factory one. I did have a look around, of course, in the engine bay a little bit, and it looks really a nightmare to replace just for a simple sensor. So if you can maybe get to it easy, maybe you can try a cheap sensor and, and, and try it. Um, maybe it's just I'm uh, unlucky with uh, aftermarket auto brand sensors. That's also uh, a possibility, of course. So, no said, let's get started. So, we are in the car now, and uh, I will start it up so you can see uh, what is going on. Of course, the system is in Dutch, so I will roughly translate it. There is a controller inspout system. And roughly translate to uh, please check your uh, uh, injection system. So let's start the car. And now it's saying uh, controleer luchtverontreiniging. Or uh, please check your air pollution system. Something in that neighborhood. The problem is I'm smelling something now, so the chances are really big that maybe those hoses are. So I let the car warm up for a little bit and uh, plug in my scan tool. Behind here is the OBD port. As you can see I didn't put it back uh, as it should be. This is really a nightmare to get out. So. Or you are going to bust some fingernails or get something uh, from plastic and just wedge behind there. It's really, really stuck in there. But because I didn't put it back uh, as it should be, it is a lot easier now. Okay, it is uh, a bit hard to record, but I try my best. So, first, we're going to do is uh, log into the system. It's of course a uh, Renault. There's a lot of glare. So let me see if I can dial that the light back a little bit. I don't know exactly what it is, but I cannot get a... It's just unreadable if I... Even if I dim all the lights, it's... It's a bit weird, so... That sucks, of course. Hopefully you can see it now. While well, we select a Renault. And... We do uh, automatic. Uh, yeah. It's reading the fin number, so... Well, this is... Uh, Correct. Of course, we want to do di diagnostics, and we're not going to do all because this isn't the quickest uh, scanner out there. So we know we have a problem with the uh, injection system. So this can take a while. Well, it's back, so uh, we do read codes. Uh, as you can see, we have here DF1003 and uh, is diff pressure sensor circuit particle filter particle filter value outside tolerances. So let's select that. And 
And let's see what it does now. Okay, these are all the parameters that are within the system. So, inlet temperature, atmospheric pressure, uh, water temperature, and those look all just fine. But if you're going down, then we have this. And this one is the suit in the particle filter. Can you see it now? Yeah suit in the particle filter and as you can see zero and even if I hammer it it just does nothing and that's not normal there is absolutely no way I will be able to film where that thing is. Um, it is behind here. Uh, a little bit lower, somewhere there. Can I feel him? Yeah, I can feel him. So, that's a little bit of a plus. The problem is, can I undo it like this? Probably not. And the other issue is, even if I can uh, disconnect it, I probably won't be able to reconnect the hoses. So this is a definitely no-go. One option I could try is to remove this intake hose and, and maybe I can sneak my hand right here behind there. And that is probably also a no-go. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is uh, remove this whole paraffin or rain guard or and hopefully I can get my hand back there. First of all these rubber things, you can just pull them off and next up we need to remove these wiper blades and this is a uh, little bit of a button and you can pop that off. These are uh, 16. And most of the time these are really in there. So I don't expect that I can get them off like so. Ah. I'm lucky, at least with this one. If we can repeat the process. That wasn't that difficult. If you don't get them off, use one of these tools. These are not that expensive, maybe a couple of dollars. What you do is you put them under the wiper and like so you can, well, it tightens up and you pull it off. On both sides of the panel, you have a little rivet right here. And you can just gently just gently pry it out there and then it will come out and it looks like uh, this so and here we have the inside of the panel and just over here there and there and one here in the middle and two out there 
it looks like. Oh, and also some small ones right here. This one, and of course on the other side the same. We have to remove and then hopefully we can get this whole panel out. And these are also 10. There is a sensor in the way and lucky for us, is this a sensor or just a terminator? Yeah, it's a terminator. Probably, uh, probably this connection is for some accessory that isn't uh, in the car. Maybe something like a rain sensor or something. Maybe it is easier to remove this whole plate. And these are also 10. There are also some electrical connections here. We need to just unclip from the panel. Don't try to pull on the wire, but try to pull on the clip. If you pull on the wire, well, if you have bad luck, then maybe you would damage them and uh, you have all sort kinds of issues. Don't forget the two in the corner. And these are T30s. Jesus. I don't know what's wrong with these things, but they definitely don't feel like fasteners. This one is just coming out of here, so there's probably something wrong with that other side. It looks like that the metal insert is spinning, so hopefully This is the solution. Just some, some clips. And hopefully we can now just take it all out. At least I can see the damn thing now. It probably looks pretty funny on camera. Well, the hose is uh, torn apart. So we're a little bit uh, out of luck, so I hope, hopefully I can get uh, those hoses today or else I don't know exactly what to do. I will try to, sh I will try to show you where the part is located. something that I can show you a little bit better. Well, those are the connections. That is the sensor. Those are the two hoses. And as you can see, Hopefully, 
right there some black stuff on that red line well that's the tear and that was something I did not see before and if we go a little bit lower there is also another clamp and well those clamps you have to take off and then you can pull it all out unfortunately the camera is definitely in the way so I will do that off camera also the sensor is over here connected with a let's see there a 10 millimeter I think it is and when the sensor is installed we can install the rain thing back in its place And next up these ones with a washer attached to it. You can also use a T30 on those guys. Don't forget the bracket. Be sure you clip every sensor and thing back in its place. Even though uh, this thing doesn't do anything. But if you leave it in there you have a chance that it is rattling all over the place. And that's something you definitely don't want. And of course we don't want to forget those uh, nuts. That goes right here in the corner. Next up we need to install that top piece. And again, these clips on both sides. Then the wiper arms, the one with the long blade, is for the driver's side. Aligning these things back to its original place can be a little bit of a hassle. But what I do is, as you can see here, hopefully you can see it. There is a collection of set, just a stripe right here. That is the place where the wiper has been sitting for years and years. So what I do is uh, align it with that. Something like so. And then put the nut on it. And we do the same thing with the other one. And then of course the caps. And the last but not least, the weather stripping. top of it and 
And that is how you replace your particle sensor on your uh, Renault Megane. I know the scoter is right here, but there went something completely wrong with the outro that I made back then. I edited the video and it was just not usable. I'm really sorry I could not get any video about how to replace those uh, hoses. It was just not possible. And I hopefully made it as clear as possible as I can. Um, be sure you have some long needle nose pliers uh, to help you out. The longer the better. Um, be sure that you use some kind of, of cloth to just protect your front of your car because most of the time you have to be on your engine and most of the time you're gonna scratch your paint and that is just something. If it doesn't have to then please don't do that. After I replaced the sensor I also cleaned out the particle filter with a, a can of that stuff. You just have to undo the uh, O2 sensor and you can get it in there and uh, just with little sprays. Uh, for some reason I did not film that. It was uh, I don't know why I did not do it, but I didn't. In the near future, my brother wants to do that procedure again, just to be sure. So I'm going to shoot it then and make it a separate video. And I will of course link it then uh, there in that uh, balloon right here. And of course, also in the description. But since we replaced the sensor and of course the hoses and flushed the system, after we did all that, the coat was gone and it hasn't reappeared since then. It is now maybe four months ago. Uh, yeah, I know it took a little while <laughs> to get you this video, but I have been busy with other things. Um, and that has priority and of course YouTube is still my hobby and not my profession. So yeah, videos come when they come. But yeah, that's it for today's video and hopefully uh, you enjoyed it or at least learned something from it. And if you did, please give it a like. If you want to follow me around, you know what to do. And I will see you next time. Bye.